even after this 26% jump in two days, it still has not. All right, welcome to Talking Investing. I am Tom, and as always, this is not financial advice. Today, I want to talk to you about a company named BitFarms. They are a Bitcoin miner, stock ticker BITF. So BitFarms announced their January production and operations results. So I want to go through those today as well as I want to go through the chart because Bitcoin had a very big day on Friday. It held all weekend. And now today, Monday, February 7th, it's having a very big morning. So BitFarms has had a massive reaction. So I want to finish up by going through the chart and looking at what's going on there. We cover Bitcoin and the Bitcoin miners quite a bit on this channel. So if that's content that you're interested in, please do us a favor and subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell. Also, if you enjoy this video, please smash the like button and feel free to drop a comment below. Let's start off by looking at BitFarm's January results. Okay, BitFarm's provides January 2022 production and mining operations update. Paraguay Farm commences production. Okay, so they say the commencement of operations in January at its 10 megawatt farm in Paraguay increased total farms in production from six to seven and total capacity to 116 megawatts. So this capacity is going to be important because they plan on growing their exahash quite a bit this year. So they need to make sure they have the capacity to run those machines. Bringing our Paraguay farm online marks the start of our commercial operations in South America. The first of our two South American development projects, bringing the Paraguay farm online, furthers our goal of achieving three exahash per second by the end of the first quarter and eight exahash per second by the end of 2022. So you can see these Paraguay farms are critical in order for them to keep up with the capacity to run the machines that they've already purchase ordered and plan on having installed this year. Furthermore, I'm pleased to report that January 2022 production of 301 Bitcoin represents an increase of 51% from the January 2021. This strong year over year increase validates our growth model. So year over year, they're up 51% from January to January. However, I like to look at the month over month. And in this instance, the month over month, they're actually down and they go on to try to explain why they're down. So, so it is good that year over year, they're up 50%. They've been trending upwards all year, but January in particular is always a tough month for them because here they say, as part of our economic and ESG strategies, BitFarms utilizes excess electricity generation and has been for several years party to a curtailment program at some of our farms in Quebec. As the province of Quebec is powered almost entirely with renewable hydropower, during the period from December through March when Quebec is affected by colder weather, the electricity that would otherwise be in excess of the community requirements throughout the rest of the year is sometimes needed to heat and power local homes and businesses. As a result, during these extreme cold periods, Hydro-Quebec and municipal utilities will occasionally invoke the energy curtailment program. The energy curtailment programs are impacting production similar to prior winter periods as a normal part of our operations. January is typically the most affected month with seasonality moderating throughout February and March and limiting the impact on our overall mining. So it looks like if looking at past years, January and February are the tough months for them. So that remains the case this year. If we just take a quick look, you'll see that in their December release, they announced they produced 363 Bitcoin. So January of last year, they did 199. February, they did 178. So you can see those were the two worst months of the year. And those probably most likely, like they said, were affected by the curtailment program. So we may have one more month of pain with BitFarms where they are sharing the electricity. And again, everybody should understand that that means that during the rest of the year, they are just taking excess electricity. It's also hydroelectricity. So this is a very green situation for them. So ultimately it's a good thing, but it does result in a couple of months of the year being less than what they would have been. So by December, they were at 363 Bitcoin. And then back to January, they are at 301. So that is the reason for the pullback. So this was expected. Uh, I think you can expect some more in February and then we should be expecting fairly big results in March, in my opinion, based on the way things are lining up for them. 
Okay, so mining production, 2.3 exahash achieved as of January 23rd, 2022, up 100 petahash per second from December of 2021. So they continue to increase their exahash. They're at 2.3. At the end of the third quarter, I believe they were at 1.5. So they've added, they're getting close to a full exahash that they've added in the fourth quarter and here at the beginning of the first quarter, 2022. 301 new Bitcoin mined, we discussed that. 9.5 Bitcoin mined daily on the average in January. 299 Bitcoin from mining in January deposited into custody. They were able to hold 299 of the 301 Bitcoin that they mined. So they have obviously taken a big holding strategy. In fact, they put out a press release a few weeks ago that they actually bought 1,000 Bitcoin. That brings us to the next line, which says 4,600 Bitcoin in custody as of January 31st, 2022, inclusive of the 1,000 Bitcoin purchased during the month, representing a total value approximately of 175 million based on a Bitcoin price of 38,000. So it's now only a, a few days later and Bitcoin's over 43,000. So we see the volatility of Bitcoin. That value will change over time. Bitfarms, like many of the other mining companies, are very bullish on the price of Bitcoin over the next, you know, one, two, three, four, five years. So they are taking a strategy of holding as much of their Bitcoin as they can. They have secured some other means of financing in the meantime, and they will need some more financing because, as they said earlier, they're looking to get to three exahash by the end of the first quarter and to get to eight exahash by the end of 2022. So those are big goals. They're only at 2.3 right now. They were at 1.5 at the end of the third quarter of 2021, and they're looking to get to 8.0 at the end of the fourth quarter of 2022. So that would represent massive, massive growth. So let's just take a quick look at where BitFarm sits right now. And then when we go to the chart, you're going to see between Friday and today, they are up massively. But so are the vast majority of the Bitcoin miners. Bitcoin had been in a downward trend for the better part of three months. At the moment, we're having a real upward push. Maybe too soon to call a reversal, but we are now $10,000 off of Bitcoin's low from about a week and a half ago, which was somewhere almost exactly at $33,000. So BitFarms today, at the moment, they are up 13.9%. So they've been hovering between up 10% to up 15% on the day. That puts them at $4.34.5. That puts them in a market cap of $807 million. This is a chart of BitFarms market cap since they moved over to the NASDAQ in the summer of 2021. So you can see it has fluctuated greatly, but their market cap has been as high as almost $1.5 billion. They're down nearly 50% from that, and that was on November 9th. That corresponded with the peak in the price of Bitcoin. So again, I like to look at market cap over time because it takes the question of dilution out of the equation. This is apples to apples. They're somewhere around half the market cap they were three or four months ago. So today brings them over the $800 million mark. Uh, and again, they've been near 1.5 billion. So let's look at the charts and put that in perspective. Okay, this is the BitFarm chart on the one day time frame. So each one of these candles represents one day. This was November 10th. So you can see that that was the peak of Bitcoin as well as BitFarms, and they were trading at $9.32. Before they started trading on the NASDAQ, they were actually a little bit higher than that much earlier in the year, but still very close to that point. And this was the peak of their market cap. So the other significant line that if you're familiar with our channel, we always talk about December 29th was the end of the bear market for Bitcoin in September. So there was a rough run in September. Bitcoin ran down to 41,000. We're now, as of Friday and this weekend and today, we have now passed that. So Bitcoin is at 43,000, uh, making its way towards 44,000 at the moment. So when we zoom in, you're going to see that the last few days have been massive growth in the stock price of BitFarms. However, all they have done really is get back to where they were at their low in September. So Bitcoin being even higher than that right now, really, they still have some catching up to do. Okay, so first let's look. This is the close of the day on Thursday. So Friday and today, Monday, were the two big days in Bitcoin's movement. So Bitcoin went from somewhere in the 36,000 range to it's closing in on the 
$44,000 range. You'll see BitFarms is up significantly too. We know they're up 13% today. They're up 26.8%. And again, we're in the middle of the trading day today. So these are not the final numbers, but we're up almost 27% in two trading days on BitFarms. And that sounds like a lot, but I'm gonna add Bitcoin to this chart and you're gonna see we're still not done catching up to just the movement in Bitcoin. So since the beginning of January 2022, Bitcoin is down 5.8%, whereas BitFarms on the year is down still 15.5%. So even after this 26 or 27% jump in two days, it still has not caught up to Bitcoin's activity you know, I said I said in the middle of last week, I thought there was a lot of catching up to do. I think we just did a bunch of it. I think there's some more left to do. So for me, I am holding, this is one of my larger positions. I'm holding all of my positions at the moment. Having said that, there has been a very big run up. So uh, taking some profits at this point is probably a pretty sound strategy also. And again, this is not financial advice. You guys need to decide what makes sense for you. So if we go from trading right now where we are in the middle of the day here on February 7th, if we go back to BitFarm's price on December 27th, that would be a 40% increase in the price of BitFarm stock. If we could get back to that point, and I believe Bitcoin was trading somewhere in the $52,000 range. Okay, so this takes us back to December 3rd. And if you remember, December 3rd was the Bitcoin flash crash. It was trading somewhere at 57 or 58,000. It crashed all the way down, crashed all the way down as low as 42,000 and settled at around $47,000 that day. So if we go to just prior to that crash, that would represent about a 67% increase in the price of BitFarms. Those are my two price targets that I'm looking at over, you know, between the end of the first quarter and maybe the middle of the second quarter. Obviously, that's very dependent on what Bitcoin does. Bitcoin seems to be getting healthy, but you never know. We still could be in a fake out. We still could retrace some of our lower numbers. So assuming Bitcoin can get healthy and get back to not its all time high at 69,000, but it, if it can just get back to where it was trading comfortably between 52,000 and 57,000, I think these price targets are very reachable. So that's all I've got for you on BitFarms today. So thanks so much for watching and I will see you in the next video.